Hello and welcome back. In this video, I want to discuss what happens when we place a conductor inside an electric field. But before I get too far, I first want to explain what a conductor and an insulator actually are. So a conductor is a material whose atoms only very loosely hold on to the outermost electron. And because these atoms are only loosely holding on to the outermost electron, when you place a conductor inside an electric field, that outermost electron can actually wander away from the atom, and it can be pushed around by this external electric field. A insulator, on the other hand, is made up of atoms which very strongly hold on to all of the electrons inside the atom. And as a result, if you apply an electric field, the electrons really can't wander very far from the atoms. They're very, very closely held to the atom. So as I just mentioned, when a conductor is placed inside an electric field, the electrons inside the conductor will move in response to this external electric field. So for example here, if I have this piece of metal and I place it inside an electric field which points to the right, because the electrons inside the metal are negatively charged, they'll experience a force which pushes them in the opposite direction of the external electric field. Now because these electrons are negatively charged, as they're pushed over to the left side of the metal, the left side of the metal becomes negatively charged. And because the metal is originally neutral, the right side of the metal becomes positively charged. Additionally, because electrons repel one another, because the electrons have like charges, they're all negatively charged, as more and more electrons start to form on this left side of the metal, they'll repel other electrons. So this electron now is going to be, it's going to feel a repulsive force from these electrons on the surface. And so what this does, if we think about this, so we have a, let me just kind of draw a picture here. So we've got this metal conductor, and there are these electric field lines which point to the right. And then there's also another electric field that's actually caused by the charge on the surface of the metal. So we get these negative charge that forms on the left side of the metal, and a positive charge which is forming on the right side of the metal. And this charge on the surface of the metal is actually creating an electric field of itself. So there's an electric field inside the metal which is going to point something like this. And so what happens is that the electrons inside the metal will continue to move in response to this external force until the electric field that is caused by the surface charges on the metal cancel the external electric field inside the conductor. So eventually what happens is the electric field inside the conductor will go to zero. And we'll get something that looks like this. We'll have an electric field which is going to kind of come in like this and just touch the metal. But inside the metal itself, the electric field is going to be zero. So we'll have this negatively charged surface over here and a positively charged surface over here. And we can see these electric field lines are actually ending on this negative charge. And then over here we have positive charge and the electric field lines are emanating from that positive charge. But inside the metal itself, the electric field is zero. And the reason the electric field has to be zero is that if the electric field wasn't zero inside the metal, then the electrons would be able to move in response to that electric field. And the electrons are always going to move until they eventually cancel that electric field. And because the electrons have such an incredibly small mass, the electrons will move almost instantly to cancel out any electric field. So as a result, this, this process that I just described happens almost instantly, and the electric field inside a conductor is almost always equal to zero. And this charge that forms on the surface of a conductor is called an induced charge. So I've explained what happens to the electric field inside a conductor, but we can also actually say a little bit about the electric field immediately outside of the conductor. So if we think about this, if I have an electric field which is tangent to the surface of a metal, the electrons inside this metal are going to experience a force due to this electric field. So I'm going to have negative charges that are going to build up over here, and I'm going to have positive charges that are going to build up over here. And these charges will create an electric field all of their own. And this electric field, which is created by these charges, will eventually cancel out this electric field. So what will happen is that this electric field is going to bend due to these charges that are forming on the surface. So this electric field is going to end on these negative charges, and then I'm going to have electric fields emanating out here from these positive charges. 
And what happens is that the charges on the surface will always distribute themselves so that the electric field lines touch the surface perpendicular to the surface. So these electric field lines are coming in perpendicular to this metal surface or this conducting surface. And the reason this happens is that if there was any component of the electric field that was tangent to the surface, then these electrons could move along the surface. And when they move in response to that component of the electric field that's tangent to the surface, they eventually cancel out that component of the electric field. So as a result, the electric, fields the electric field lines are always perpendicular to the surface of the conductor.